In this problem, we're told a student of mass 60 kilograms starting from rest slides down a slide 20 meters long, tilted at an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the horizontal. If the coefficient of kinetic friction between the student and the slide is 0.12, find A, the force of the kinetic friction, B, the acceleration, and C, the speed she's traveling when she reaches the bottom of the slide. Right, so imagine this right here is our student. I just drew a box, right? It's the same thing essentially. And so they're gonna be traveling down this incline, which is tilted at 30 degrees. Right? We know the mass of uh, the student right, is 60 kilograms. Uh, we know their coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.12. We also know the slide right, is uh, 20 meters long. Right? So I just labeled it delta x, because right? it's essentially their change in their x. Right? And so this is basically what we're given. Right? So what we're trying to do is solve for, for the first part, right, for A, we're trying to find uh, the force of kinetic friction. Right? So the first thing you do on these problems is always go ahead and uh, you want to label the free body diagram. Right? So what are the different forces acting on this person? Right, so on the box, essentially, we just have the force mg, right, which is the force due to gravity, which is just going to be straight down, right? It's not perpendicular, uh, doesn't matter, it's just going to go straight down, right? We also have the normal force, which is going to go up like this, right? It's perpendicular to the incline, right? So it's basically going straight up like this. We also have the force of friction going against it, right? This direction, right? So these are the different things. And so what we're going to want to do first is solve for the first. Uh, the force of kinetic friction, right? So you can call it F sub F or F sub K, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it F sub F. But essentially the force of friction, you need to know the formula for it. The force of friction is equal to mu sub K times F sub N. So this is the formula we're going to use to solve for this, right? Because we want to find the force of friction, right? But we need mu sub K, which we're given, 0.12, but we need the normal force and we want to be able to solve for it. So what is the normal force of um, this thing traveling down, right? So the student. So in order to calculate the normal force, we have to find the sum of the forces in the Y direction, right? So the sum of the forces in the Y what is it going to be equal to? It's going to be equal to zero because they're not moving in that direction. So you just say zero is equal to, and then what are the different forces? So what, when you do these problems, right, notice how I'm drawing this. So the, this line right here is your x-axis. So we imagine this is just straight like this, right? Essentially, it's just this, but at a curve. But you just imagine that's the x-axis, right? So just imagine it's straight. Okay, so it's going to be zero is equal to the force, right, in the y direction. So this is y, right? So it's aligned with the y. So f sub n is one of the forces in the y. And then minus, there's another force, right? And this force is going to be the force due to gravity, but it acts this way, right? So this is like a vector, right? So we can imagine it like this. This is the force, right? Due to gravity is straight down. Uh, and it's just going to be one of the components of this. But we have to find it, right? So how do we find that? So the way we're going to do that is by using trick. So what you should notice, right? Imagine we have this triangle, right? So this is our triangle. And so this triangle, this angle right here is 30 degrees. And the reason that is, is essentially what this angle is, it's this angle right here. It's the angle between... Uh, this uh, straight down force, like the, the y direction force, or the force of gravity in the y, right? And then the hypotenuse is mg. So this right here is mg of our thing, which means in this triangle, it's mg right here, okay? So just keep that in mind. This is mg. And then what is this side right here? This is x, right? And you can label it y or x, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm actually just going to label it y. And the reason is because this is y, right? I'm labeling the side. So this is y, and this is the y on our uh, triangle we're just drawing. We're basically just reproducing this, okay? So yeah, so this is mg, the hypotenuse. This angle is the same as the angle of the incline because it turns like this. It just means this angle is this angle right here, the incline. And then y is what we're trying to solve for. So how do we find y? So we're going to be using uh, trig. And essentially, the cosine of an angle, 30 degrees in this case, is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So ka toa. So the adjacent side is the y, right? Over the hypotenuse, which is mg. Meaning if we want to solve for y, we can just multiply both sides by mg. And then we just get mg is equal to the cosine of 30. Right? And you'll, you'll, you'll basically get to a point where you just know this looking at it. But and just know if you have like a normal force right, and it's tilted at an angle, it's just mg multiplied by the cosine of the angle it's inclined. So y in this case is mg times the cosine of 30. Right? So getting back to here, right, we wanted y because right? we have to subtract the forces in the y direction. Right? Because f sub n is positive, so it goes up. And then we minus the forces going down. So it's basically minus mg times the cosine of 30. Right? So what does that tell you? That just tells you if you add this to the other side, f sub n is equal to mg times the cosine of 30, right? So we can solve for the normal force. And then once we have the normal force, we can just plug it in. So m is just going to be, so m is uh, 15, right? Or not 15, sorry, 60, multiplied by g, which is gravity, right? 9.8 times the cosine of 30, right? So go ahead and do this. 60 times 9.8 times the cosine of 30. You're going to get, it equals 509.22293374. Okay, so this is essentially uh, the normal force, right? And so now we can plug it in. So the force of friction is just going to be equal to uh, this right here, right? So just plug that in right here. 
and then multiply it by mu sub k, which is 0 0.12, right? I'm not going to rewrite it, but it's just, no, it's this. So it's just, uh, right, the normal force, which we just found, multiplied by mu sub k, 0 0.12. When you do that, you're going to get 61.10675, and so on. You can just round. So I'm just going to say 61.11. So I'm just rounding this up. And then keep in mind, uh, it's in newtons, right? So 61.11 newtons, that's what we measure a force in. So the force of friction is 61.11 newtons. All right, cool. So now we've done A, let's move on to B now. So what are we trying to find for B? So B, we're trying to find the the acceleration. So we want to find the speed, essentially, it's traveling down uh, this thing. Or not the speed, sorry. We're trying to find the rate it's at which it's accelerating, okay? So how do we do this? So essentially, we're going to do a similar thing that we did in A, with we take the sum of the forces, but instead we're going to be doing it in the x direction. Right? So if we take the sum of the forces in the x direction, instead of it equaling 0, right, it's going to be equal to ma. And the reason that is is because force equals ma. right? So this is just the resultant force. right? So force equals ma, but in this case, it's accelerating downwards. But in this, the velocity was 0. It's not moving right in the y direction at all, meaning if velocity is 0, acceleration is 0. right? And so if it equals ma, that's why this was 0, but this is actually ma. Okay? So some of the forces equal ma. So that means ma is equal to, now what are the sum of the forces in the x direction? So we have two different forces here. One of them is going to be the force of friction, right? So we have the force of friction in the x direction, right? Because keep in mind, this is our x-axis. So in the x direction, we have the force of friction, which is, we know what that is, right? It's this right here. So my, and then keep in mind, it's going this way, which is negative, and then the right would be positive. So it's minus 61.11. And then we want to add, and then there's a force in the x direction as a result of gravity, right? Which is this line right here, right? So this was this one, and now we got to find this one. So how do we do that? So think about it like the triangle again. If we want to solve for this, which x is just this, right? Because we want, this is gravity, so we just want to find the x component. So x, we know the sine of the angle, 30, is equal to, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So the opposite side is x over the hypotenuse, which is mg. If you multiply both sides by mg, you get x, mg times the sine of 30, right? And so that's going to be this force right here, the force of gravity, because we have to add all the forces. And it's positive because it's going in the positive x. So plus mg times the cosine of, thir or sine of 30, m is just 60 times 9.8 times the sine of 30. But yeah, so this is what you're going to have. And when you do this, right? So add this up. So MA is equal to, let me plug in my calculator one second. So it's going to be minus 61.11 plus 60 times 9.8 times the sine of 30. When you do that, you're going to get 232.89. And notice if we want the acceleration, we just have to divide by the mass now, right? And the mass is just 60 right, because that's the mass of our student. So divide by the mass, which is just 60. So 232.89, divide that by 60, and you'll get 3 point, you'll get A equals 3.8815. So you can round this however you want. I'm just going to round to 3.88. So 3.88, and then the units are going to be meters per second squared, right, because we're using uh, newtons and dividing by kilograms. So uh, 3.88 meters per second squared. That's going to be the acceleration. That's your answer to B. So now we've got A and B, and so let's do C now. So for C, we're trying to find the speed she is traveling when she reaches the bottom of the slide. So this is the bottom of the slide, right? So we're trying to find her velocity when she reaches here, right? So we don't know what that is. We're just going to denote it by V for now. So V equals question mark because we don't know. And then in the beginning, what do we know about it? So let's actually just write given here. So given, we're solving for V, which we don't know. And then what else do we know? So we know the acceleration, the rate she's going to be accelerating at, right? Which we just calculated in this problem. So that's going to be equal to 3.88 meters per second squared. And so what I'm doing here, what you should notice here, is we can use kinematics to solve, right? So we have, or we don't know V, which is what we're solving for. We have A, and we also have uh, V sub zero, right? Because we know it's going to be starting at rest, meaning uh, V sub zero, or the velocity, since it's at rest, it's not moving. Therefore, the velocity is zero. So V sub zero is zero meters per second. And then we also know the distance they're going to be traveling, right, which is 20 meters. So delta x in this case, right, the change in the x is 20 meters. And now we have acceleration, we have v sub 0, and we have delta x, meaning we can solve for v using kinematics, right? So that's just uh, what we're going to do. So the formula we want to use is uh, v squared equals v sub 0 squared plus 2a times delta x. And so hopefully you remember these from kinematics. But if we want to solve this, we just have to take the square root of both sides, right, for v. 
and it's just going to be the square root of v sub 0 squared. v sub 0 is 0 because it starts at rest. 0 squared is still 0. So 0 plus is just the other thing right here. So 2 times a, which is 3.88. And if you want to use the more exact value, you can. I'm just going to use this one, though. So 2 times 3.88 times delta x. So uh, how far it travels is 20 meters. So this is just going to be 20. And then you just want to do this, right? So square root of 2, right? Let me plug in my calculator. 2 times 3.88, and then multiply that by 20, right? Go ahead and do that. You're going to get 12 point four five uh, seven nine and so on. I'm just going to round to 12.46. And then keep in mind the units. We're using meters and seconds, so it's meters per second, uh, right? That's velocity. So meters per second. This is going to be the final velocity, right? So their velocity as they cross the incline. But yeah, so 12.46 uh, meters per second. That's C. Uh, B was 3.88 meters per second squared. And then A was just 61.11 newtons, right? So the frictional force. But yeah, so these are your answers. And hopefully you found this useful.